Yeah, 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 you all know, you already know. It's the Galactic one. Elanuda L. Back cracking spells. South all the Galactic Guardian, 720 degrees. Shout out to the whole you all, bro. Everybody living in the universal right order. Jumping right into the demonstration. We gonna build on uh, New Black Sunday School. And we gonna tap in. The father of religion. The father of religion. First of all, what is religion? You know, what is religion? You know, I'm trying to get this shit. So I can have a definition for y'all. Get this shit tricky. But what is religion? Get this shit out real quick. Put the definition up. According to the academics. Right? The belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. Note that they had some plural going on right there, right? So it says the belief in the worship of a superhuman controlling power. So the belief, you already know, belief means a soul thing, be unsure, you really don't fucking know. So it's already lacking because they're telling you it's the belief of something. Now you believe in and you worshiping, right? You worshiping a superhuman. So they're telling you right then and there that these gods are humanoid form. They just told you that they superhuman, right? Superhuman. So when they talk about giants in the earth and all this other shit, we ain't got superhuman type motherfuckers and saying it right here, right? And you religious, right? Religious. To their academic standpoint of view, you gotta believe in superhuman motherfuckers that got controlling power, right? Especially a personal God, singular, right? Or gods, Elohim. Elo, right? So you got single gods, Yahweh, and then you got Elohim, multiple gods, right? So then you could believe in either or, is what they basically saying. Nobody, right? You could basically follow or subscribe to the multiple gods, or you could follow and subscribe to the singular god because they got powers. These motherfuckers got controlling powers. You know what I'm saying? So they fighting over who gonna follow them. Obviously, that's what it's looking like if you got superhuman, you know what I mean, controlling powers. A particular system of faith, faith still uh, dealing with the unseen, you know, following the unseen, that invisible force, the spooky God, you feel me? And worship, basically. A particular system of faith and worship is basically what they're saying Religion is, right? A pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. Supreme, the highest importance. Supreme, they said they use the word supreme. So we're talking about the highest importance of your motherfucking life, basically. You ascribe into something that, you know what I'm saying? Your interest, you putting your inner to rest into this type of, you investing your time into this type of shit. So, you had you putting it into faith and you putting it into belief. Remember, we talked about three steps to every master's carpet. You got belief, faith, and fruition. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, religion only allows you to deal with two steps. You see what I'm saying? When one is trying to master self, you feel what I'm saying? It only allows you to deal with two steps. You did? So some controlling power is making you not get to fruition, to not know. You feel what I'm saying? Because fruition means to know. And you want to know the facts, right? You know what I'm saying? You want to know the truth, right? There's a difference between truth and facts. But overstand, 
religion. When you break it down etymologically, it means you're binding back or tying back into something. Right? You're binding back or tying into something, right? So what are you binding back or tying into? If it's invisible, unseen, right? You know what I'm saying? You can't see it, whatever, whatever. You just, in your mind, you're, you're, you're imagining, using your imagination. So you're binding back to that, right? The, the, the superhuman controlling power. You know what I'm saying? You're binding back into this invisible force. Of, of God or whatever the fuck you want to label it or gods that you want to label it this is what you're binding back into now religion on a scientific level means that you're binding back to your ancestors through cellular memory through blood because blood is information DNA you know what I'm saying you ain't nothing but a replica and a replica and an upgrade and an upgrade and an upgrade of motherfuckers that existed thousands of millions and millions of years ago so you supposed to be able to tap back into the blood that's flowing through your system and all the other shit that's your shit you feel what I'm saying your makeup the shit that you connected to your natural nature connectivity right so you supposed to be able to do a, a scientific form of religion which is binding back to your ancestors by letting your ancestors speak through you, move through you, live through you, feel through you, act through you. You feel what I'm saying? And you still be yourself though, because there is a self, and then you gotta know when your ancestors is doing things. Because there be sometimes you may get into certain things and situations, and you wonder how you did it, blah 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 blah, or why you did it, blah 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 blah. And it may be your ancestors that wanted to drink, and you don't drink. You wondering why the fuck you want to go out and drink tonight and do all this shit. That was your aunt who liked to get loose. You feel me? That's your great, you know what I'm saying, niece who was, you know what I'm saying, who liked getting busy or whatever it may be. So you got to overstand. Sometimes your ancestors want to live through you or, or they living through you, through the blood. You know what I'm saying? So religion in the scientific sense means to bind back and tie back into your ancestors. But they have us dealing with you know, from their point of view, you know, now you worshiping a personal God or gods, you know what I'm saying? That is basically dealing with a belief system or a faith system, right? And so who 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 made all of that up? Where that shit come from? If you want to know where it come from, then you got to deal with the religions, right? You got to tap into these religions that we've been dealing with and see, you know, who's saying who made that type of shit up. So obviously they're telling us that Abraham is the father of religions, right? When you think about Abraham, Abraham is the dude that was God's favorite, you know, because he lied to the Egyptian dudes and all of that and told him, you know, told them a lie about his shorty and all this other crazy shit just to pass through the gates and all this other wild shit, right? So when you look at his name, though, Ab, Ra, and Ham, all those Phonetic words or tones, because those are tones. It's really Ham, not Ham, but Abraham, right? You see that Ab, Ra, and Ham in his name. Those are comedic tones which have, you know, meaning behind them, right? So the Ab would mean father or heart, right? It could mean your heart or it could mean your father, right? Then we're talking about Ra, we're talking about light. Then we're talking about Ham or Ham. Which is the blackness, right? Black. So, Abraham would basically mean father of the black light. If you break it down on a glyph level, you know what I'm saying? To get an understanding of the tones of the words, you know what they mean symbolically. You see that his name means Abraham. That wasn't his first name in the beginning. It was Abram, Abram, Abram right? Or Abram, as y'all pronounce it, right? But Abram, Ram, the Ram, right? So he was the father of the Ram, the Gohead, the inverted five-pointed star worship type shit. You feel what I'm saying? It wasn't until he came to Kemet, he became Abraham, or the black light, right? And on a whole nother level, because these beings don't exist really, that whole Abraham shit is some made-up plagiarized shit. It's just a story to get you to overstand that Amenahat, Amenahat, look up Amenahat the third, and you'll see that this being is someone who came from Canaan, 
crossed over into their land of Egypt or Kemet, you know what I'm saying, slew one of the kings and became some type of pharaoh figure and all that other shit, like he took over type shit, you feel what I'm saying, the dude of Menahem. So, and he's not originally from Kemet, you know what I'm saying, but if you look at his life time period and you match it up with the story of Abraham, you'll see that there's some type of correlation there where they kind of squeezed and slipped around some names and did some other shit, kind of jacked that story and slid that in, you feel what I'm saying? So really, Abraham is a menahem, but that's a whole nother demonstration. We're going to keep it on a, a biblical sense, right? So, Abraham being the father of religion, right? Uh... The birth of Abraham took place basically when Nimrod, the son of son of Cush, right? I don't know if y'all familiar with Nimrod, but he was the one that had the whole Tower of Babel shit popping that made God and them had to come down and see how this nigga had it jumping. Whoever this God was, which was Enlil, we know that, but I'm just giving you the, the breakdown on a, a, a biblical sense. So God and his son and them, because he came down with some angels and shit, so and Lil and his his kids and shit had to come down and check this shit out because these niggas was not on a frequency. You know what I'm saying? These these uh gods with superhuman control and powers, especially a god or gods, and Lil and them had superhuman control and power. They were controlling the earth and motherfuckers wasn't the, the Tower of Babel, Nimrod and them wasn't listening. They wasn't on that frequency. You heard? They was on a whole nother frequency, had their own like, Go read the story. And you'll see that these niggas, because they was black people. You see that these niggas was on a whole nother frequency and God, they were minding their business basically. And, and Lil and them was like, damn man, them niggas is on some other shit, man. Yo, shout out to them again. And they, you know, they ain't listening, but they doing their own thing. You heard me? And they was building a supposed, supposedly a tower to God, right? So like these niggas about to reach us. Like, we can't be having these niggas in the skies with us. You heard? Because and Lil is the ruler of the skies, you heard me? And so he like, yo, we can't have these niggas up here with us like that. You feel me? We got to go down there and incarnate, you know what I'm saying? Take on a humanal form, you know, because we superhuman, you know what I mean? Take on a humanal form and go down there and see what these niggas is about, you feel me? And confound their tongues and fuck their shit up, basically, you know what I'm saying? And, and twist their whole shit up. And so basically, <clears throat> you know, this is the time when Abraham was born. He was born in the time when motherfucking Cush was popping, the son of Ham, right? You know, Ham, Ham, Ham is one of, y'all know him as Noah, but the story comes from Utafishnam, you feel me? Uh, son of Lamech, who was the ruler of Babel at the time. Abraham was the individual who was to change the world to worship of Allah as al Gabi, the unseen. See? So the whole unseen aspect right here, it comes in when my man, Abraham, brought you what you call today, Miller Ibrahim. The rights or the religion to rely on gen energy of Abraham. Because anytime you're relying on a religion, you're relying on gen energy. Phonetically of the word. You know what I'm saying? Relying on gen, religions. You feel me? So to be religious, in a sense, you got to be careful and mindful of the spell of the word, because these are spells that we deal with, right? And so Abraham was an individual who was to change the world to the worship of Allah as Al Gavi, the unseen, and call it Mila Ibrahim, the rites or the religion of Abraham, of Abraham, not of God, not of the Elohim, not the, of Abraham. You feel what I'm saying? Al Hanifi, the upright. You feel me? Uh, as opposed to that prescribed by the new laws of Tammuz as given to the Enos called Dina al-Islam. So basically, uh, Tammuz is a Babylonian deity who, at the time, this is where this is, must be going on, at the Tower of Babel, Babylonian, blah, 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 right? So these niggas is ruling, and, you know, they got a certain wave that they are called Al, you know, they did Dina al-Islam because Dina is the sister of Ishmael, blah, 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 whatever. And so they deen, call it Dina al-Islam, right? So they following the Tammuz way. They on a whole nother way, basically. They not dealing with what Mila Ibrahim. You feel what I'm saying? This is something different. 
So they were unworthy in this cycle to refer to the name Anu who is unseen. It will be called Dina al-Islam for the mother of Tammuz, Ishtar was Dina. So Tammuz's mother name was Dina. You feel what I'm saying? In, in different cultures, Greek or whatever the fuck. Right? So now, as you can see here, they was on a whole nother frequency. They, they wasn't even rocking with the, the, the unseen Miller Ibrahim shit. They was on a whole nother al-Islam wave, right? Nimrod, the son of Samiris and Cush, was trying to keep the old time religion, the worship of Anu, in the hearts of the people as Ilion, Ilion, El, and warned by Melchizedek that this was not his responsibility. So he proceeded to build idols in Anu's likeness. So when he was building this tower of Babel, basically, Melchizedek, the high priest, like, yo, Lordy, you can't be that ain't the same, even your, your position to be doing that, my lord. And you know Nimrod was a Jabor, basically, too. That That's a whole nother thing when you get into the Jabors, because basically he had, um, and the Jabors basically like a devil on a certain level. But he was a mixed being. Jibberines, you know what I'm saying? Angelic beings basically mixed in with the humans type shit. So he was part of that type of lineage you feel me? He had that in his nature, in his blood and shit. So he was still doing what he felt he needed to do as a, you know, the mighty Jabor. And, you know, he was warned by the priest. Well, chances of that, yo, that ain't even your role to be doing that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And so he, he continued on with what he wanted to do, right? Then in his own place and placed them in his temples. This was not in an unusual practice for all the Anunnaki had stone likeness. So everybody was building shit. But he was trying to be on some, I'm building the, the biggest shit, right? Nimrod commanded the inhabitants of the mountains, the ancient Phoenician Canaanites of Babel to worship Anu. So he started putting people on to the, the whole Anu shit, right? On one occasion, the chief astrologer Merlin told Nimrod that it appeared from the position of the celestial bodies that in this year, a man of extraordinary powers and great authority would be conceived in the city when Nimrod brain that so basically uh, Merlin was one of the magicians at the time who was around you know uh, Nimrod and the empire and he put him on to the science on his magic shit like yo it's about to be a you know what I'm saying doing his astrology shit he seen a, a, a son coming you know what I mean somebody that's gonna be born that's gonna be fucking up your shit in a minute you feel what I'm saying so basically he would introduce the people to the rites and the laws that was given to Sakaar by the 24 el elders that was in the midst of the enclosed garden of the light, which was headed by Kaki El and his son Raziel Zem El. Head of the 20 12 disagreeables and Gabriel, son of Raziel Zem El, head of the 12 agreeables, who both agreed that the Adamites needed a focal point for a deity, one deity who they called the law. Thus it became Dean El Allah. The laws of the Adamites were to keep outside of the garden concerning food and eat freely of all that you cho choose to eat. For Azra Razu, the Elohim, had given unto Adamites every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree which is in the fruit that you shall eat for the beasts of the field, blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's move on because I want to get into Abraham. Right? And all that is good. Ooh, speed it up. Abram was an individual who was expected to change the world. Nimrod tried to keep his worship of Anu the, to the, uh, 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 the Anunnaki to the people. However, before Abram met Melchizedek, right, he was teaching the people to worship the Canaanite deities. So before he even met Melchizedek. He was already on a certain frequency. Coming from where? The land of Ur, Chaldean, right? So he was already on a certain type of frequency before he even met Melchizedek. He placed these idols in the temples and commanded the inhabitants of the mountains to worship them. Nimrod sat in the council with the great Anunnaki. On one occasion, Merlin had ordered none of them to see the shit, the juicy shit. But basically, as you can see, Abraham was the one who brought Miller Ibrahim in prior to ones already following a certain frequency of Dean Islam. You know what I'm saying? By Nimrod and his whole 
empire at the time, right? And you see that it was some type of friction going on where they was trying to shut him down from doing whatever he was doing. But on a, another level, you can look at it from the standpoint of view where a minute had came in, uh, came in at the time, like I said, from the Canaan and all of that, and ruled and got in and blah, blah, blah. So there's different ways you could look at the story, right? And break it down and see that it was somebody who came and changed something along the way. You know what I'm saying? This figure, who they call Abraham, who they call the father of religion. You know what I'm saying? Was to put the world in a state of kind of like sin and make it sinful life. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you got to be mindful of religion and what you're tying yourself back into or binding yourself back into, you know what I'm saying? Because certain religions belong to certain entities and certain beings, you feel what I'm saying? Like, like I said, certain, uh, Abraham is the father of certain religions. And these certain religions that y'all following today are tied into what he had put down, you know what I'm saying, as an individual being, if y'all saying that this being is existed and is real, right? So you got to be mindful of what you tie yourself back into. Know that your ancestors are within you as secular memory through blood, through DNA, through information. You know what I'm saying? So that's how you really tap back. And that's the real, true meaning of religion. So another galactic glorious day, y'all traveling on. Peace.